In this podcast, I want to discuss one of the oddest miracles in the Bible. And for a very strange reason, in my opinion, it could be one of the greatest biblical miracles. But we can't really understand this miracle until we look at a medical procedure that took place in 1991. Hi, my name is Dean Smith, and I want to talk about the healing of the blind man found in Mark chapter 8. Welcome to a podcast by OpenTheWord.org, where we discuss a bit of Bible, a bit of life, and a bit of politics. Now, there are several powerful miracles in the Bible. The resurrection of Christ that broke the power of death, and of course, for cinematic effect, what can top the parting of the Red Sea. But in my estimation, this odd healing of the blind man recorded in Mark 8 deserves a spot in the top 10 Bible miracles. And they came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. Taking the blind man by the hand, he brought him out of the village, and after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men, for I see them like trees walking around. Then again he laid his hands on his eyes, and he looked intently and was restored, and began to see everything clearly. Mark 8, verses 22 to 25. There are several unusual things about this passage. First, this healing is only mentioned in the book of Mark. None of the other gospel writers talk about it. Who knows? Maybe they considered it as a failed or less than perfect healing. Secondly, Jesus was in the town of Bethsaida when when the people showed up with a blind man asking Christ to heal him. But the first thing that Jesus did was take the man by the hand and lead him out of Bethsaida. Why didn't Jesus heal the man right there in the town? Many wonder if the reason lies in the fact that Bethsaida was one of the cities condemned by Jesus in Matthew chapter 11 verse 21 because the people didn't repent despite all the miracles that had been done there. Does this suggest that because of their unbelief, Jesus wasn't interested in performing any more miracles in this town. The third thing is that people brought the blind man to Jesus asking the Lord to touch him. And because they specifically asked Christ to touch the man, Jesus decides to do it in a completely different way, revealing that healing can come in a variety of ways, from Jesus laying his hands on people to giving a word and healing a centurion servant that was miles away, to telling a man to bathe in a pool, and in this instance, spitting on the man's eyes and then laying hands on him. Though performed in different ways, the underlying foundation of all these miracles was faith. But certainly the strangest thing about this healing is that it seemed to come in two stages. After spitting on the man's eyes, Jesus asked the man what he saw, which is also the only time Jesus asked a person if they were healed. When the man answered that he saw men walking as trees, Jesus laid his hands on his eyes and the man's eyesight was completely restored and the Bible says that he could see clearly. People have a lot of opinions on what happened here. Some have even suggested that Jesus needed more faith to complete this healing. Jesus was functioning as fully man, fully man, and we do know that in at least one instance that Jesus did not perform many miracles in Nazareth because of their unbelief. Though I'm not sure if that meant Jesus couldn't do miracles or simply decided not to. Others have argued that sometimes healings, healing can come in stages. There can be a progression. Others have wondered if it has a connection to Mark 4 where Jesus says people were seeing but not perceiving or understanding what they were seeing. Was this a physical illustration of the spiritual problem in Bethesda where people were seeing miracles, but not understanding the true meaning that Jesus was the Jewish Messiah? But I'm beginning to wonder if there was something more to this healing. In fact, I believe it contains an incredible message. The first clue is found in the story itself, because when we look at this passage, we find the word see used several times. The first couple of times, Mark uses the Greek word blepo that refers to the physical act of seeing. This is the word that Jesus used when he asked the man what he saw. 
It is a, it's the word that the man used when he answered that he saw men walking his trees. But the final time the word see is used in this passage, Mark uses a different Greek word to describe the man as seeing clearly. It is the compound word in blepo, and it means to focus on, and according to Strong's, it means, quote, metaphorically to look at with the mind, to consider, unquote. It seems to add a mental aspect to the seeing. Is this significant? Well, to understand what was happening here, we need to hit the fast forward button and make sure you stop when you reach the year 1991, where, we'll, where we will take a look at an eye procedure done on a man named Cheryl Jennings, age 50 at the time. Cheryl had been blind since he was 10 years old. After being diagnosed with retinous pigma, pigmentosa, <laughs> I hate these words, it is a condition that attacks the retina, affecting how it responds to light and can result in permanent blindness. Dr. Olive Sachs was a professor of neurology and psychiatry at Columbia University Medical Center in New York. He wrote an article in the New Yorker and later included the story in his book, An Anthrop Anthropologist on Mars, telling us what happened to Sheryl when he received his sight after a lifetime of blindness. Like Sheryl, who died in 2003, the blind man in Mark may have been able to see at some point early in his life because though men and trees were merging together as one convoluted, confusing mishmash of images, he nevertheless had, had some idea what a tree looked like. In 1991, Cheryl's girlfriend was seeing an eye doctor, Dr. Trevor Woodhams, because of her diabetes. After telling him about Cheryl, Woodhams encouraged her to have Cheryl come see him because though Cheryl had been diagnosed with retinous pigmentosa, because he could still see light and dark, Woodhams wasn't convinced that this was the real problem. In fact, Cheryl had very thick cataracts on his eyes, and after Woodhams removed them, incredibly, Cheryl was able to see. But there was a problem. In his book, An Anthropologist on Mars, Sachs quotes a passage from a journal written by Cheryl's girlfriend that states for several weeks after, Cheryl struggled to see properly. She wrote that Cheryl often felt more disabled than he had when he was blind. Steps posed a special hazard because all he could see was a confusion, a flat surface of parallel and crisscrossing lines. He could not see them, although he knew them as solid objects going up or coming down in three-dimensional place. She added that the cat was a real challenge for Cheryl, though he recognized the various parts of a cat, such as its paws, tail, and ears, he was not able to visualize these see separate parts as a complete unit. Sachs wrote, His retina and optic nerve were active, transmitting impulses, but his brain could make no sense of them. But then, Cheryl's girlfriend made a statement in her journal that is oddly similar to our blind man in, our, in Mark. She said that it took several weeks before Cheryl could see the branches, leaves, and trunk as being part of a single tree. In fact, Cheryl told Sachs when the bandages were taken off his eyes, he only saw a blur of light, darkness, and colors and images, and suddenly he heard a voice asking him what he was seeing. It was only then that Cheryl realized he was looking at the face of his doctor. And this was exactly the same problem that the blind man in Mark was having when he saw men walking his trees. The images were not making sense to him. Though it took several weeks for Cheryl to finally sort this out, when Jesus prayed for the blind man in Mark a second time, he was able to see clearly. In fact, this was not a two-stage healing. Like Cheryl, the blind man would have eventually learned to see properly, to distinguish the difference between the different images. It is what babies go through as they're learning to see. When you hold them, have you ever got that feeling that they're looking right past you? Well, because they probably were, as they're, as they're still trying to distinguish your image from the background. But here's the incredible thing about this story. That statement, I see men walking as trees, is proof of a miracle taking place because only a man who had been healed of blindness would have had that problem. 
And we didn't know about this problem until modern medicine started restoring sight to the blind. That statement proves that Jesus had healed the blind man, putting it, in my estimation, on the list of the top 10 miracles in the Bible. Thanks again for joining us on our podcast. Please check out our website at opentheword.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to receive notifications about our latest production. As well, please take a moment to provide a rating or even a review. Thanks again for listening.